May God bless every one of you. We continue, brothers and sisters, with our study, and I give thanks to God for your faith faithfulness for tuning in every Wednesday, and maybe you watch it on a different day, but in the same manner, we give thanks uh, to you that you are attending these studies, which are a great blessing. And today we will continue with the epistle of Jude, which only has one chapter, and we are going to see in verse 11 and one part alone. Woo to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. And I repeat to you, verse 11 says, Woo to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. And to understand, what the way of Cain is. Let's go to Genesis in chapter 4 and so that we will be in the context of why Jude makes this terrible uh, exclamation of woo unto those who follow this way, this way of Cain. So let's go now into chapter 4 of Genesis verse 1 and it says, Now Adam knew Eve his wife and she conceived a and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. And so here we see that Cain was the um, oldest brother after the fall, or the oldest son, and he was a tiller of the ground. He used to till, work on the ground, and he would sow and he would reap or harvest. And it is interesting to mention that Cain and all of the descendants uh, after Adam Oh, before the fall were not mentioned, but the descendants of Adam after the fall are not mentioned as uh, sons to the image of God, but as uh, to the image of Adam, a uh, fallen image that is. And here is the reason why we are going to see the reason of how uh, sin multiplied. So uh, chapter 5, verse 3, it, we're going to see this. It says, And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness. And so it, we could see that in Genesis when God created man, he said in the likeness and image of God. But the sons of Adam are no longer in the image of God. Uh, it says, and It says, And begot a son in his own likeness after his image. And what was Adam's image after the fall? It was a distorted image. It was an image affected by sin after the fall. And the second of his sons was Abel. And he was, as we read previously, uh, was a shepherd. And so we're going to look in verse 3. It says, Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And it says that uh, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. So it was already established uh, that offerings would be brought to God. And he was a tiller of the ground. And he brought this offering of the fruit of the ground of the Lord. Verse 4, Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and, and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, verse 5, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. So there you can read it for yourself in verse 5. So we have, in, have to have into account a principle here, the principle of redemption. So we can comprehend what is happening in this chapter 4. We are going to understand the principle of what redemption is. In chapter 3, after the fall, God took skins, animal skins, to cover the nakedness. In other words, the sin of the first couple who had disobeyed. And so we're good until there. And it was so that they would be able to present themselves in front of God. But look at this. In order to have 
those animal skins, Jehovah God shed blood. In order to be able to cover them, there was a shedding of blood. And that is the requisite of God to cover sin in that time. That was the requisite. And let's notice that sin was only covered. And here we can learn that only through redemption by the shedding of the blood of the Lamb of God, sins can be erased. No longer covered as in the Old Testament. Nowadays, through Christ, we uh, the sins are not covered. It's not just a uh, as if it was a um, like a mending, but it is it is a complete uh, forgiveness. John the Baptist said, "Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world." And so, going back to Cain, Cain is angry, and we see in the beginning. And we can see in the beginning that the shedding of the blood was the beginning uh, of God. And so Cain always brought his own effort, the fruits that were derivated from his own effort, from his own work and what he was able to do. But there was a principle in Genesis chapter three, without the shedding of the blood, there was no remission of sins. Without shedding of blood, Adam and Eve would not have been able to present themselves in front of God. They had to present themselves when they were covered. But in order for them to be covered, uh, the Lord shed the blood to be able to get these animal skins and cover them. So now Cain is very angry with God because God did not accept his offering and God uh, was not pleased with his sacrifice. And let's remember why. Why was God not pleased with Cain's sacrifice? It was because there had been no shedding of blood. The offering from Cain was a fruit of the ground. It was a vegetarian offering of his own efforts. Now, verse 5. Let's look at this. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry. And uh, his countenance fell. And the expanded word in Spanish, ensañarse, says to show themselves to be very cruel and to show contempt against someone. And his countenance fell or his face changed. When the countenance falls, it is when a person goes from the state of perfection to the state of imperfection to change the facial expression quickly. Instead of looking for God and make changes to please God, what Cain did is he got angry. Sin had entered into Cain because of pride. He wanted to look better than his brother. He wanted to look better than others. Everything is already activated and deacted based on what he wanted for himself. If we do not occupy ourselves, beloved, with cutting sin off our life, all of this is going to manifest. In verse 6, it says, So the Lord said to Cain, the Lord is dealing with him, and he asks him the first question. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? Why has your facial expression changed? Notice the question. Why has your countenance fallen? God speaks to him. Look at how beautiful the Lord is. In spite of his anger, God asks him, Why has your countenance fallen? And he gives him the way out. He gives him the advice so that he can change, so that he will change his attitude, so he will repent and seek the, to follow the way of redemption and not his own way. And look at how beautiful it is, this next part in verse 7. It says, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, Sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. 
look here what the Lord is telling him. Pay attention. If you do well, if you do what is good, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not, or let's, let's stay there. If you do what is well, the word well has nothing to do with our righteousness. It has to do with doing the will of God. And so you will be accepted. You will be received. You will be exalted. You will be accepted. But look here. Your offering will also be accepted. The Lord, before he sees the offering, he sees the heart of the offerer, first and foremost. That is why I think that the offering of Cain must that have been abundant with all kinds of fruit. But his heart was not according to the heart of God. And much less, he did the will of God. He didn't bring the shedding of the blood to be able to come near to the Lord. So therefore, in other words, beloved in Christ, it says, you will be accepted, you will be exalted. In other words, everything that you do will be prospered. And if you do what is evil, then sin lies at the door. What that means is that if we don't do the will of God, there will be consequences. Let's have into account that everything that we do, whether it's good or bad, has consequences. If we do what is evil, Genesis is at the Genesis says that sin is at the door. Sin is at the door. It's very near to you. And it will go against the sinner by taking dominion of the person. Sin is going to take dominion over the person who did not follow the advice of the Lord, who continued in their foolishness and their hard-headedness and continued to do what is evil. And that is when sin is very near us and it will go against us. And how is it going to go against us? By taking dominion over us. And that is why the Lord tells them the advice. He says, if you do well, uh, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And with all of this, and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. So how can we rule over sin? We are only safe, beloved, when we do the will of God. Then it puts sin far away from us. God wants us to learn to have authority over sin and to dominate sin. Look here, so that sin will not dominate us. And here is the question. You might ask yourself, how can I do this? How can I govern? How can I take dominion? How can I have authority over sin? And the answer is, it is through redemption, through the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ. Verse 8, now Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. As we can realize here from verse 8, Cain did not follow the advice of God. God spoke to him. God warned him. There will be consequences. If you do not do what is right, sin is there, close to you. It's at the door. But if you do well, then you are going to be exalted. You are going to be accepted. It is so sad, beloved, that God speaks to us in many ways. And in these final moments, he speaks to us through the Son by his word. And that we persist in our hard-headedness of not wanting to listen. There, we already began walking in the way of Cain. In that hard-headedness and that foolishness of not wanting to hear and beloved in Christ Jehovah God will always speak to us to deliver us from falling into the dominion of sin sin had already taken dominion over Cain he took his brother out to the field he killed him and he was not only angry and had jealousy towards his brother but he was angry against God and he took it out on his brother and we can say well I have no problems with God I have a problem with that person. I have anger. I have resentment. I have uh, bitterness towards that person. I am affected uh, with this person or by them. I want to have this person far away from me. 
But what we should have far away from us is the sin in our hearts. That's what we should have far away. What does the letter 1 John chapter 4 verse 20 says that the one who doesn't love his brother doesn't love God either. So what love are we talking about? It doesn't fit for us to say, I love God, but I have resentment, anger, um, hatred against my brother or my sister. Because the same chapter 4 and verse 20 says, such a person is a liar and a murderer as Cain was. And so realize that it's not about getting a gun and killing our brothers or sisters. Uh, but even with just anger, resentment, unforgiveness converts us into a murderer just with that and you can read it again in first john chapter 4 verse 20 so when we say i have no problems with god but you do have a big problem with god because if you don't love your brother your sister you don't love god either the real cause of the anger was sin cain took it out on his brother because he had done what was right Cain could have done what was right, too. God gave him the way out. But Cain, instead of doing what was right and learning from his brother, he took revenge on his brother and he released his wrath and killed him. If we do not dominate these sinful desires, then sin is going to dominate us. Sin and Satan have a relationship. They're not separate. Listen to this. When we do not dominate sin... It is an invitation to Satan to be used by him instead of being instruments of the divine will of God. Verse 9. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 4 verse 9. And God speaks to Cain again. Where is Abel your brother? Now my question is, could it be that God didn't know where Abel was? And what is it that Cain had done? Of course he did. But God expects for us to have a healthy closeness, a spiritual closeness with our brothers and sisters. And I say healthy because there are carnal relationships and they are confused with spirituality. Spirituality with a brother is that I come close to them to pray for them, to exhort them. I come near to tell them, brother, sister, I wish you the best. That is a spiritual union. But let's be careful because many times we confuse the emotions, the feeling, that emotional feeling with the truth and the righteousness of the spirit. So let's have a healthy closeness, which is spiritual with our brothers and sisters. Now, due to sin, there are tensions, there are fractures, and the relationships could even be destroyed. Where is your brother Abel? He asked Cain. And look at the answer and see how sin is ascending. So in verse 9, the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And we're going to uh, stay with that. I do not know. When we do not dominate sin, this will grow. The sin will make us not think correctly. Cain is answering incorrectly instead of saying, I am angry, I am furious, I am bothered, I am jealous, I am envious, but I repent of what I did with my brother. Once again, the mercy of God giving Cain the opportunity for him to confess what God already knew. Here it doesn't fit to say, oh, God knows. No, here it fits to say, look, Lord, this is what I did. And I come to you and I confess it to you, even though I know that you know. Do you realize? But Cain does not do that, but rather he lies to God. I don't know. Now, did Cain truly not know where his brother was? Of course he did. He knew where he killed him and he knew where he left him. But he lies to God and he says, I don't know. God had already told him, beloved in Christ, if you do what is right, you are going to dominate sin. But he allowed himself to be dominated by sin. He preferred to be governed by evil and he got filled with pride and jealousy when he wanted to be better than his brother. And since sin grows, he then 
allowed and he was disrespectful with God. He was irreverent. When we lie to God, we truly don't know him and we deceive ourselves. Why? Because we can't deceive God. So therefore, we deceive only ourselves. Look at how tremendous this is. And he answered him in a very disrespectful way. Am I my brother's keeper? I don't care. I could care less about my brother. Why are you asking me? And this is what he's truly telling God. But look here how the mercy of God, he knows everything about us. How do we try and pretend to deceive God? We pretend to lie God. When we get to that degree of lying to God, it, it, it means that sin has already took absolute dominion of the person. God knows it. Yes, God knows it. But he expects for you to confess and for you to repent. He knows everything about us. If we say that we have not sinned, the Apostle John says we make God a liar. But the liars, we are the true liars. Because we're liars when we say, I haven't sinned. I'm good. We boast so much and say, oh, I'm good. As if we never sin. As if we are untouchable. As if no one can discipline us. As if no one can exhort us with a word because I'm good. And we make God a liar when truly uh, the liars are these who follow the way of Cain. Look at what Cain says. Am I my brother's keeper? Well, the will, the will of God is for us to look out after one another. That we will be persons who are vigilant so that my brother and my sister will not trip. That they will not fall in the dominion of sin. Not hugging their sin or consenting their sin. Uh, because we are following the same way. And I was meditating on this. The Bible mentions two demon-possessed gatherings. And the Bible mentions two lepers. And he mentions a group of ten. But what called my attention when there's two with the same sickness or the same feeling or the same possession. One of them contaminated the other. One of, one of them contaminated the other. When we clothe, cover somebody else's sin, sooner or later, you're going to become a leper. The prophet told his servant, Jesse, he said, don't take anything from Naaman. Naaman had been a leper. And how did Jesse end up? A leper along with all his family. Look at the gravity of this. Look at the irreverent way of Cain's answer. Do you expect for me always to be watching over him and be vigilant with him? To be irreverent and disrespectful with God is a consequence of being under the dominion of sin. Let's watch our words, beloved in Christ. What have you done? God asks him. Once again, God is giving him the opportunity to confess his sin. Look at the mercy of God and that he will repent from his evil. The blood, the voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. The voice of your brother's blood cries out strongly, loudly for justice. But what is happening in spite of the fact that God is revealing to him that he knows what he did and he does not repent. Cain does not repent. Sin had already taken dominion and Cain was going to be errant all of his life. He was going to look for God, but he was no longer going to find him. That is the, the sad end and the destiny of those who follow the way of Cain. Cain is the efforts of a dead religion. Abel's is the desire of a worshiper that does the will of God. The anger of Cain shows his roots of pride. He could not accept that his brother was better and that his brother was accepted and that he was not. Why him and not me? If we have the same position, if we could do the same thing, simply because God sees the heart. That is the reason why. The sin of Cain is a spiritual pride and hypocrisy. Let's see the course that was in descendants or going down. When we don't repent our sin, when we don't repent from our sin. So this was the time and opportunity for Cain when we are confronted. 
instead of getting angry like Cain, we ought to recognize our failures. We ought to recognize our sin because that's what God is looking for, our, for our repentance so that he can forgive us and begin to do what is right instead of hiding his sin. Second, the incorrect manner and disrespectful and prideful way that he answered, I don't know, am I my brother's keeper? The empty religion that leads to um, that vain religion, uh, it will lead, uh, that is what makes the rebellious one uh, be just a religious a, a person of appearance. Somebody said that vain religion leads more people to hell than atheism itself. Now Cain did not feel bad about his sin, but he felt bad when he heard the consequences. There's many people like that, insensible to their own wickedness, but they get angry when they hear that judgment is coming to their wickedness. That's when they get mad. They get mad when they hear that there's a judgment coming, but they don't repent. They don't have the sensibility to recognize their own sin. Conclusion The way of Cain is a religion of appearances, of hypocrisy, bothered, angry because of the accomplishments of those who do what is right. They are competitive people. They want to be the best. They want to have the best positions. And if they don't get them, they hate, they covet, they envy, they lie, they don't want to be confronted with the truth, and they murder. To be confronted with their sin, they get bothered, they're disrespectful, they're bitter, and they cover their sin, even though they're conscious that God has spoken to them. But they go against the brother or the sister because their obedience to God makes them feel bad. Let's remember that if we do what is right, we will have dominion over sin. To the contrary, sin is going to dominate us. Sin is going to bring great consequences daily. So what is the remedy? What, uh, what is the answer? To look for redemption, to look for salvation, coming to the Lord, confessing our sins. We're not going to be benefited if we continue to lie to God, believing that God doesn't know our sinful condition. Are sinful of hard-headedness, which is pride, which is the root of all of this evil. Psalm 51, 17 says, The sacrifice of God, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, a heart that is humbled. There it doesn't fit who we are because we're nothing without him. And to look at what it says, these, O oh God, you will not despise. Why was Cain angry? Because his heart was not contrite and God had rejected him. He came in a different attitude. We can sing, we can preach, we can pray, we can seem like the most spiritual but if your heart is not broken, if the heart is not humbled in front of God, we are offering the offering of Cain that God rejects, that God does not accept. Neither he accepted Cain and much less his offering of hypocrisy. Proverbs 23, 26 says God requires a total surrender from us. He says in verse 26, my son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. When we surrender to the will of God, we will be delivered from walking in the way of Cain. In other words, what is the way of Cain? The way of pride, the way of hypocrisy, jealousy, anger. That is the way of the disrespectful ones arguing and fighting with God, justifying their own sin, getting further and further away, more and more from God, ending in a way of error. Away from the presence of God, Cain would come to the altar, pretending to please God. Nonetheless, his works and his attitudes were not according to the will of God. With everything spoken, beloved in Christ, we reach this conclusion that the way of Cain, of which the epistle of Jude speaks, is the way of vain religion, of hypocrisy and of appearances. Second Timothy 3 verse 5 says they will have the appearance of piety, but they will deny its power. 
effectiveness means the power of regenerating the person by changing their lives. They denied that power, that regenerating power. They preferred to continue in their attitude of I'm good and I know and nobody has to correct me and nobody has to teach me or show me and nobody has to tell me what to do. And so they are rejecting the regenerating power in that person's life that can change their life. And Paul says, hey, keep those far away. Avoid them. There was an exterior change in them. On the outside, on the outside, they looked very pretty. But on the inside, there had not been any changes. They continued in their own pride and hypocrisy. They will have an outward appearance of reverence toward God, some for gain, some for personal gain. And these offered a lip service to God, but their hearts were far away from God. And the Lord Jesus said it in Matthew 15 verses 8 and 9. These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is very far away from me. That beloved in Christ is in brief the way of Cain. Now, what way are you walking in? The way of the ones who are doing the will of God? And live with a contrite and a humbled heart because we know that God is never going to reject that heart. Or do we want to live in our own way, believing that we are good, living a false Christianity of appearances with roots of pride, wanting to be the best? And if they rebuke us and if they correct us because I feel that I'm the best, nobody has to tell me anything. Let's be careful because Cain, he ended up in a way of error. You know, I have no doubt that he cried out to God, but he was so far away from God in such error that God no longer heard him. May God bless you abundantly is the desire of my heart and that this teaching will be profitable for our lives. Jesus Christ is coming, beloved. Let's straighten up our ways and let's walk in the way of the Lord Jesus Christ, meek and humble of heart. Blessings.
speed.